Good evening. Thank you for joining us. My name is Shalia Ben. I'm the Assistant Director of the Native American Arts Program and Community Outreach here at Ida Wild Arts. On behalf of Ida Wild Arts, I'd like to respectfully acknowledge the Kawishba Kawiekna, also known as the Kawia Band of Indians, and all nine sovereign bands of Kawia people who have stewarded this land for generations and continue to steward this land for all future generations. This evening, I welcome you to the Michael Cabote Artist Talk series. Before we get started, I'd like to thank our sponsors, the Agua Caliente Band of Kawia Indians, the Chickasaw Nation, San Manuel, and an anonymous foundation. Thank you. I'd also like to thank Joe Baker and Teria Smith, who are our senior consultants to the Native American Arts Festival Week. Thank you so much. Be sure to join us at idawildarts.org forward slash creation to take a look at the online exhibition and take a look at our past uh, Artist Talk series. Big shout out to Christy Scott who organized all of that. We're super excited to have two Artist Talks this evening, one with Eliza Naranjo Morris and the other with Sarah Biscara Dilly. I'm happy to introduce you to Eliza Naranjo Morris. Before we get started, I'll turn it over to Nina Sanders, the curator of At Creation. Nina. Eliza Naranjo Morris. Eliza is a creation. She makes homes, tells stories, transforms communities, and still has time to teach art to school children. Her work is gently elusive, coaxing us to ask curious questions and helping us to imagine even more curious answers. Eliza's work is beguilingly enlightened. She has things to teach us, but she only gives us just enough to awaken our own imagination. She reminds us to imagine our own answers. Hello everyone, my name is Eliza Naranjo Morris and I am recording today from Tewa land, from Kapo Oinga land, Santa Clara Pueblo land near Española in northern New Mexico. This is where I'm from. This is where my extended family and I take care of the land and this is where I created the artworks that I sent to Idlewild earlier this summer. I created four versions of this drawing one morning from different angles uh, of an animal reaching towards the top of a mountain, carrying a bundle, walking alone at dawn in the snow. This drawing made me think a lot about uh, who these animals are, what they're carrying, and where they're going. The drawing Light from Love, created in March 2021, describes their destination, a center point of relationship and possibility. The day I began getting this illustration on a roll was in mid-March when Raphael Warnock gave his first Senate floor speech and I thought about sending his words uh, towards a center of possibility, uh, guarded and protected and blessed uh, on a strong spirit's back. I also had a conversation with our elder and Ko'ol, Diane Reyna, uh, who I thought about um, carrying her, her being uh, also towards this center point of possibility to be shared throughout the universe. It has long been an insecurity of mine that my work, which I feel serious about, will be seen as silly because of the aesthetic. And I like that in this work, I just stopped worrying about that. I've been using shelving as a visual tool to describe the gathering of good medicine. I'm using the word medicine very inclusively and not limited to acts of social justice, uh, cultural knowledge sharing, acts of caring for place and community and uh, caring for our own beings to heal, to heal our bodies as well as acts of creativity and love. This small artwork made out of paper and color and cardboard was a way to begin to place these ideas into a visual space. I want to point out that putting holes in the work is a way to acknowledge the space that they're existing within. 
COVID was a storm that came closer and closer until it was the center of my family's experience. Looking back, it surprises me how long normalcy is hung on to. At some point, uh, anything normal was let go of and I began to exist um, moment by moment, uh, centered around contacting family, um, breathing and stretching and walking as prayer for people too ill to do that on their own. And uh, things like standing in CVS, not knowing what else I could possibly buy that might help heal my hospitalized mom, who I hadn't seen in several weeks or hugged in months. Mm. I teach art and I made this artwork uh, called November 2020 uh, while FaceTiming my five-year-old niece who had a uh, a set of the same material, sorting the colors and the shapes and the shells became um, meditative, a, a way to organize something. Um, the black stone was uh, gathered and tumbled by a young man who was overcoming addiction. And when it was handed to me, the person said, you know, this took a lot of work. The Clay shard is from an old sculpture of my mother's that was uh, um, going back into the earth in my yard. Art has all kinds of purposes and I treasure this work because it helped me be completely in and get through a moment. My mom got out of the hospital and she's doing really, really well. Um, I want to extend my heart to families who have been met with the reality of their loved ones not making it back home. During COVID, I would sit by my mother-in-law's bed as she stared up at Superstition Mountain. She didn't remember who I was anymore and invented the possibility that she and I were at base camp getting ready to sleep well, wake up and meet the sunrise and scale this earth. Uh, if I were to climb this mountain with anybody in spirit, I would be honored to do it with her. I want to thank the place of Idlewild, Idlewild Center for the Arts, Nina Sanders, Shalia Ben, and the staff, and I want to thank Michael Cabote for clearing a path for me to be able to share thoughts on this work. Up next is Sarah Biscara Dilly. Sharing a few words before we get started is Nina once again. Nina, take it away. Sarah Biscara Dilly. Follow the sounds and lines and colors Sarah provides us to understand these spaces. Her journey home gives us new understanding of how to make and reimagine the meaning of life through the land. In some senses, Sarah is our conduit in understanding how the land, our mother, and ancestral spaces can bring us to healing. Sarah asks us to imagine a landscape that has shaped her and communicates its deepest poetry through her as a gift to us. Together, they create new meaning. Hatu Mita Sarah Baskaradili, Wamitana Ekitana Smutan Hinka teach you. He's your teach you Katakashla Ni Sithala, Wasamimu, Was it the Kawaiu, Wa Etsman, Was it the Kaya, Was it the Kaka, Wa Eloehe, Wa Asaram, Wa Casas Grandes, Wasina Pekoro, Wasanta Catalina, Wasik Pats, Wasil Koshario, Wa Wainaya. Was it the color? A silk young nipo who chin needs boo teach you Saitana Jojenu. Mitakana ni sakina wa mi kina huana needs boo chin teach you wa yaki shono wa yaki tanasmu wa University of California Davis ni Native American studies. Um, greetings, my name is Sarah Biscara Dilly um, and I'm speaking the language of the people of Tilhini, also known as San Luis Obispo, California. 
Um, I'm letting you know that I come from good people, from the villages at Sithala, which is near Cayucas, California, Sithakawaii, which is near Cambria, California, Itzmal, which is near uh, Lucia, California, Sithakaya, near Bryson, California, Sithakaka, near San Marcos Creek in San Luis Obispo County, Eloeje, which is near Paso Robles, California, uh, Asaram, which is near um, in Bucking, Sweden, Casas Grandes, which is in Chihuahua, Mexico, Zinapecuaro, which is in Michoacan, Mexico, Santa Catarina, which is in Baja, California, in Mexico, Sipots near California Valley or Carrizo Plain National Monument in um, Central California, Silcoshoyo, which is near the Cuesta Grade, Waimea um, on the Big Island of Hawaii, Mokopunio, Hawaii, um, and Sitakawa in Morro Bay, California. I'm letting you know that my house is at Huichin, um, which is also known as Oakland, California, and I'm ratified Treaty E region and the land world of the Chichenyo Ohlone speaking people. Um, I'm letting you know that I listen, learn, and know from my homelands, in my homelands, from my family, from our language, um, and that I'm a PhD candidate in Native American Studies at the University of California at Davis. Um, so the works that are included in At Creation, um, uh, Many Stars, Many Olivella, which is like a video collage, um, and Yatbu Shla Sa'i Tahisha, which is the work on canvas. Um, kind of bookend some parts of my process that have been impacted by the pandemic, but also are deeply connected to the work that I'm doing um, on my dissertation um, and the work that I do in my homelands and with my community. Um, so Kasi Simu, the video work, um, was something that I had begun in 2018 that has been shown in different iterations, different aspects of the work have been highlighted, um, but reworked throughout the pandemic. And this piece um, to me is really synthesizing the movement that has kind of connected our communities over a long um, kind of suspended timeline. So um, those of us who are from California may understand the importance, especially coastal California or communities that um, have had long trade relations with us, that um, Olivella is um, a very valued form of, um, yeah, material. Um, it is representing um, wealth in all of the different ways that that um, is imbued with meaning in Native communities. Um, it's not, simply kind of um, understood or quantified within a um, Western or maybe capitalist understanding of what the value of these things are. Um, that video is um, kind of following creeks from or waterways, um, which for many of us, um, whether that is salt water, whether that is fresh water, um, tend to represent highways or paths of movement within our communities. Sometimes they're highlighting um, areas where, um, rather than like a hard boundary between communities, there are like places where communities have to engage in diplomacy in order to kind of move freely through those areas. Um, but I was really thinking a lot about um, how as indigenous peoples, we are often speaking from our respective centers of the world. So when I introduce myself, I'm situating you not only within um, my home villages in California, but also the kind of expansive relations that my family um, is connected to um, across really broad distances. And I see that kind of repeated in, um, in the ways that our material culture works and the ways that collaboration works. Um, this piece, the video piece, because Sisimu, really came through as I was thinking about um, the importance of remaining rooted in my homeland while also having opportunities that I had never had before um, from basically 2017 until the pandemic to really deepen relationships with um, indigenous peoples and particularly indigenous artists um, across what is often designated as the Pacific, um, but our language contextualizes as Slo Pasini, like the one ocean. Um, all salt water throughout the world is connected. Um, so part of why I wanted to include this piece in the show in particular was because when the pandemic was kind of starting to 
show up in a kind of international way um, more broadly. I was actually in um, in Australia and Aotearoa and New Zealand. I was um, visiting New Zealand, uh, Mataprodi in Northland um, to attend the wedding of a dear friend, Ahiva Kulaparans, who was an, also an incredible artist. And it was an opportunity for a lot of people who I had been collaborating with for the last couple of years to come together in a really sweet um, social way and also really celebrate um, Ahi and um, her partner Ella Grace's love, um, be surrounded with family. You know, as I was traveling, it was when um, this was kind of mid to late February, <laughs> starting to see um, very visible and also um, kind of political impacts of this pandemic starting to unfold. So starting to see people's like temperatures being checked coming onto planes and um, the kind of tracking of movement that governments do in general, but particularly um, that has, you know, the negotiations between national borders that have really become highlighted throughout the pandemic as travel has been um, inhibited. And, um, you know, I came home um, or to where my home is at in um, California, in Oakland at the end of February. And, um, you know, we were given shelter in place orders about two weeks later. So I really um, was thinking about the opportunities that I've had to kind of go out in the world and maintain these relationships over long distances. And then also um, feeling really grateful that I was able to come home and, um, yeah, like have an opportunity to really tend to the relationships that I have here. I've been like savoring that time that I had to kind of travel before then. It's hard not being able to see um, people that I love in other parts of the world and um, really trying to recognize like what opportunities for reflection have come up. Um, and also the kinds of systems and inequities that have been highlighted throughout the pandemic, right? Most of the things that we've seen panning out um, throughout this past, you know, I don't know how long has it been, 18 months, um, is that anywhere there are systems that are not working, um, it's been really clearly brought to our attention and when I think about, to kind of come back to the piece, when I think about Casisimo, um, right? When I think about Olivella, when I think about what that is also like a metaphor speaking to, it's really asserting connection while also um, recognizing that, you know, there were just like this was a material that was, um, was in, in some ways continues to be very abundant in our homelands, you know, this is what allowed us to kind of have good relationships with other communities in different parts of the state who maybe had materials that we did not have. And those connections or those exchanges like don't just happen through the kind of depersonalized kind of capital um, capitalist exchange that we see in the contemporary moment, right? It comes through maintaining good relationships with one another. and. You know, if we wanted to have, say, obsidian, right, we had to have good relationships um, or sometimes like marriages with communities um, from other areas in order to maintain that. So something that I've really been reflecting on throughout the pandemic and why this was um, an important piece for me to include in the show is um, just how much time and space for reflection on the ways that we um, center those relationships, right? In some, in some senses, um, having strong relationships, not only with my family, but with like chosen family and extended networks is like what has made, um, you know, good health, um, financial survival, reliability, like all of these things that's made it possible. Um, and I'm really grateful that that was something that was kind of taught and affirmed to me at a very young age. Um, but really leaned on that throughout the pandemic, right? And have seen the ways that um, while kind of occupying govern governments continue to fail us, right? Um, that community organizations and tribal communities and extended networks of kin are how we took care of ourselves and each other. Um, 
we might be exchanging different materials or different resources um, in this current moment, but those are the kinds of things I've been thinking a lot about during this time, right? In some ways, our scope has gotten very small or internal, and in other ways, it's been an affirmation of the ways that we're connected over really broad distances. Um, the other work that is included in the show, Yatsbuhla um, is kind of looking at, um, well, again, this, I think for a lot of us, the, the ways that the pandemic has impacted us um, physically, has impacted community gatherings, has impacted our families, um, has impacted movement or exchange. Um, I feel distinctly aware of like the privilege that I have um, living within a driving distance of my homeland. Um, also, as a student, like currently being employed, um, teaching, and that I was able to, um, for large portions of the pandemic, still remain employed. Um, noting these these privileges and these points of access that I've had. Um, it's also because I haven't been having to go into to campus, um, which is like an hour and a half drive from where I live, to um, teach classes, right? There's been um, a sacrifice in the sense that like I don't get to have that face-to-face -face time with students, but the other part that it's kind of opened up is this opportunity for um, me to really center my schedule around like our rule of the year and our places. Um, in a way that has been more challenging to do when I'm kind of working on a nine to five schedule or working within um, a university or an academic schedule, that because everything was remote, it really enabled me to more effectively just like drop everything when it was time to like go home and gather certain things, um, that I could literally teach from anywhere that I had access to internet and, um, yeah, it really um, kind of helped me reground in the things that are most important to me, right? It's like so many people, so many of us were really um, anxious about how we were going to pay our rent the following month or um, if we were going to be able to make a car payment or making sure relatives who you know, it wasn't safe for them to travel or leave their homes to make sure people had groceries and had foods on the, food on the doorstep. Um, there were all these, you know, things to, to think about that sometimes are always present in a certain way, but felt amplified in, a, in another way. Um, but that it also allowed, um, in my case, right, I felt a little bit of space to really center the things that felt most important. I wasn't um, having to make decisions like, okay, do I, um, you know, attend this conference in person or do I like go home because it's time to gather elderberry, right? Um, I didn't have to make decisions based on those kinds of um, junctures at this point. So, um, the work on canvas is really um, a reflection on like all of the time that I got to spend at home in our places and in our villages, which is you know very intimate not only to how I understand um, my family and our responsibilities and our relationships to other peoples and places and nations. Um, it's also very intimate to the dissertation work that I'm doing. Um, it's very intimate to my creative practice, which. You know, so much of my my work is um, in some ways like mapping parts of our homeland um, in a way that feels resonant with our worldview instead of a kind of um, Western or colonial like cartographic practice, which is about like the division of space. Um, what I was really trying to highlight is relationships, and this kind of comes through in both of the pieces that were included in the exhibition um, because it was really a central um, 
yeah, central to the things that I've been like thinking and reflecting about, things that I've been, relationships that I feel um, extremely grateful for, the ways that um, it's kind of created and facilitated more, like you had to be more conscious in how we were engaging in relationship, not only for like safety and for health, but also, um, you know, when we weren't kind of seeing each other in community face to face in the same ways, it, requires a different kind of intention in how we maintain our relationships. So um, these are all things that I've been thinking about through the work and um, yeah, really appreciate being included in this exhibition and look forward to following the practice of other artists included in the show. Oh, oh many thanks. Many thanks to Sarah and Eliza for your insightful descriptions of your work. Absolutely beautiful. I hope you enjoyed joining us for the six part Michael Cabote Artist Talk series this summer. I wanted to again extend my thanks to Joe Baker and Sharia Smith, who are the senior consultants of the Native American Arts Festival Week. On behalf of Ida Wild Arts, I'd like to thank all of my colleagues who made At Creation possible. To Nina Sanders, our curator, Heather Companion, the director of the Native American Arts Program and Adult Arts Center, Christy Scott, the Exhibition Center Manager, and many others. Thank you all so much for your hard work this summer. Be sure to check out our YouTube channel, Idlewild Arts' YouTube channel, where you can go back and take a look at each one of the artist talks. Be sure to also check us out online at idlewildartsgallery.org forward slash creation. That is the exhibition's website where you can take a look at all of the works in the exhibition and also click on links to each one of the six artist talks. Again, my name is Shalia Ben. Thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye. Yeah,